Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And about six weeks ago, I unboxed and got my first look at the Lenovo Tab Extreme, a pretty amazing 14.5 inch uh, tablet that I think has been really amazing because it has not only a gorgeous 14.5 inch OLED display, 120 hertz refresh rate, that has been simply stunning, but it came with this keyboard cover. I was able to get this bundle from Lenovo directly. I did the one with the folio case, check out that that review link will be in the description below. But I think the keyboard cover really completes the package here for $1,099. And I think I got a $100 discount. Not only did I get the keyboard, but I got the pen and of course the kickstand, which is independent of the keyboard. So you can use this without having the keyboard near you. So that's been pretty good, giving a surface-like experience as well. There's a lot to like about this tablet. There are certain features on here I don't think I've seen in any other tablets. We'll get into that in this review and I want to tell you why I think this might be the best deal here and when you compare it to the iPad Pro to the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra and other Android or other tablets in general because this really is a complete package although not perfect we'll get into the cons as well hey everybody it's Andrew and this is my review of the Lenovo Tab Extreme here for 2023 coming up now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. This is not a review unit from Lenovo, just so you know. Now, when I did my unboxing and first look review, I was able to buy the unit from Best Buy. That bundle came with the folio case and the pen. So that came in at $949.99. But I just checked over at Lenovo's website and it looks like the SKU I have here today with the keyboard bundle, the pen, of course, and that one comes in at $1,099.99. For those interested, I'll leave links for everything in the description below. And considering it's a complete package here, giving you the complete experience, I think for that price, it certainly is a better deal than the iPad Pro or the Samsung Galaxy Tab S Ultra, where you have to pay extra for those very expensive keyboard accessories. And as I mentioned earlier, I did an unboxing and first look review of this unit. For those that didn't see it, I'll drop a link in the description below. I bought it at Best Buy. It came with the Precision Pen 3 and the Folio case, not the one with the keyboard. That's the one we have here today. So when you open the lid, of course, you're greeted by the unit itself. We're going to get to that in a moment, of course. And then you have the keyboard case here. We'll talk about that in a moment. You also get the Precision Pen 3, which has been working out really well for as far as taking notes, sketching out artwork, stores charges magnetically on the unit and connects via Bluetooth, adding some additional functionality, for instance, in PowerPoint presentations and the like. We're gonna talk about that later. You get an extra pen tip along with a SIM ejection tool. You get some documentation regarding the Precision Pen 3, the keyboard folio case, and of course the unit itself and you get some safety and warranty information as well. And since there's no headphone jack, you get a headphone adapter. You get your USB Type-C cable along with your 68 watt fast charging adapter. And to me, getting the keyboard case is a must have accessory here. This is the bundle to really get, in my opinion, because having that keyboard gives you so much more functionality, making the overall experience with the tablet that much better. Whether it be Apple, Android or whatever, having the keyboard with the tablet is a must have in my book. Now the keyboard does not feel cheap in any way. It actually has a really nice build quality, overall good feel, and the keys feel really good to type on. The tactility, the key travel all feels great. Now it's also a backlit keyboard. We'll get into that later. This is a really premium package. This is one of the best tablet experiences so far I've seen getting it out of the box. Now, what I really am liking is this kickstand, which is independent from the keyboard folio itself, and it sticks magnetically to the back of the unit, giving you surface-like type experience, giving you the perfect viewing angle when you're not using it in the keyboard folio. That's really good. Now, the connection to store the pen is magnetic. It's on the back of the unit, and it's a pretty secure connection. It's not coming off very easily. That's good, so you don't have to really worry about losing it. And it's a nice, tidy package when it's all said and done. The unit inside the keyboard with the pen included and the kickstand all in. This is a really nice package overall, aesthetically and functionally. That's really good. 
And by the way, you could also store the pen on the bottom of the unit, making it a little bit more easier to grab and use, although it won't charge on the bottom. It just sticks magnetically there for your convenience. Nice little feature there as well. The Lenovo Tab Extreme is one of the largest tablets out there. It has a 14.5 inch display, very similar to the Samsung's Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. So if you're looking at it at the screen size alone, the Tab Extreme is the equivalent of a 15 inch laptop, more or less. In other words, it's pretty big. It's huge. Okay, with the unit itself, we're looking at 0 0.719 kilograms or 719 grams. With the pen, 732 grams. With the kickstand, 869 grams. With the keyboard cover, you're looking at 1.501 kilograms. You're looking at a total travel weight of 1.655 kilograms or three pounds, 10.4 ounces. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is your power button. Next to that is your micro SD card slot. You'll need the SIM ejection tool to get inside there, of course. And then moving over to the right side, you get two USB type C ports, both support charge and that's great. And the bottom one supports display port in as well as display port out. So display port in allows you to use this as a secondary display or a monitor, say with your MacBook Pro, as I have here with my MacBook Pro 14 or with my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 as I'm using it in dex mode. And look at that, it even supports the touch layer and the pen. So really great functionality here. And this gives this sort of a leg up over its competition. And for those wondering, the volume up and down buttons are located on the top of the unit. Okay, let's talk performance. And this is running the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 processor, has 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And as far as power is concerned, the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 keeps things chugging along pretty nicely here. And having that 12 gigabytes of RAM certainly helps. And when I ran the Geekbench 6 benchmark, it did 1638 single core score and a 4294 multi core score. Pretty impressive pretty good when it comes to certainly productivity and when it comes to gaming. And needless to say, performance is really good here, handling pretty much every game I threw at it. Here, for instance, I'm playing the Asphalt 9 Legends with my Stadia controller connected. You can connect it via Bluetooth or via the USB-C cable as I'm doing here as it's charging as well. And it worked really well as far as the graphics on this and the gameplay overall very smooth and fluid. And having that 120 hertz refresh rate on that gorgeous 14.5 inch OLED display certainly enhances the experience, there's no doubt about it. And without a doubt, the star of the show has to be its absolutely stunning and gorgeous 14.5 inch 3K display. We're talking a resolution of 3000 by 1876. It's an OLED display. It's a touchscreen display, obviously, and it can get as bright as 500 nits. And you're looking at 120 hertz refresh rate, giving you that really smooth and fluid experience, enhancing the overall experience, especially when it comes to gameplay. Now, as far as this OLED display. It has all the hallmarks of an OLED display, the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast. It's all there. And it has some very good color accuracy as well as great coverage of the color gamut. Watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube with its HDR display here has been simply stunning. And for those wondering, this has a wide vine level one security, and that means you're going to get full HD playback in Netflix. The touch layer works really well, pinch to zoom works really well, and having such a large 14.5 inch display gives you enough screen real estate to have four open panels all at once, allowing you to multitask. I could have Twitter open in one panel, I could have YouTube open in another, my Chrome browser open in another, and a total of four makes you very productive here. So I love that multitasking feature that this provides. And the Precision Pen 3 is great for sketching out artwork, taking notes in a meeting. It really is very versatile, giving you 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. And as I mentioned earlier, it stores and charges on the unit itself, so you never have to worry about really losing it. 
So what we're looking at here is 4K 30 frames per second video on that front facing camera. And I gotta say the image quality is actually pretty good. It's got a nice field of view on this. I think the overall color science, not too bad. For a tablet, this is definitely doable, especially if you're gonna look to replace some of the activities or some of the tasks you're gonna do with your 15 inch laptop or something to that effect. And you wanna do a Zoom call, you wanna work from home. This will certainly get the job done. A lot better than some laptops I've reviewed in the past that's for certain but again i want to know what you think let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the image quality what do you think about the audio quality of these array mics i think they're pretty good as well so this is the 13 megapixel rear facing cameras and i'm shooting in 4k 30 right now as you can see the backyard has come along since probably the last time you saw it we have a little bit more furniture here it's a hot day here in las vegas but it is nonetheless pretty sunny here. So you can see a little bit more of what's going on. Trees are starting to come in. And we, I think we have a pomegranate tree right there. But uh, the pool looks pretty enticing right now in this 115 degree weather. It is very, very hot here. What do you think about the quality? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, I don't really take too many photos or videos with my tablet, but I have to say the color reproduction here, the overall quality of the images has actually been pretty good, especially for a tablet. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, usually the tablet keyboards that you buy are very expensive, not very good overall when you compare it to a traditional keyboard. Well, that's not the case with this keyboard accessory that came in the bundle that I bought directly from Lenovo. It actually worked out really well when it comes to long documents, emails, very good tactility, very good feedback. It has a multi-stage backlight that worked well, allowing me to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. That was very good. Now, it does have a pretty small touchpad, but you can do two finger scrolling and you can do pinch to zoom and all the gestures seem to work as you'd expect. And I think overall it was pretty good. Now this is running Android 13 and the software experience for the most part has been pretty good. Although there have been some hiccups, there have been a few quirks and that has to do with the fact that tablets on Android are really not optimized, especially certain software, certain applications, for instance, with Instagram, not scaling properly or not working properly as a tablet experience. And I think that's more on the developers of those applications more so than Google themselves. But I think this has a lot of work to, that needs to be done, but has been good for the most part. I think they've baked in a lot of productivity features that have worked well. But again, I'd like to see an improvement when it comes to Android tablets tablets in general. Okay, let's talk about battery life and the Lenovo Tab Extreme sports a 12,300 milliamp hour battery and it's a large battery. It's a power pack that is almost twice the size of some of the competition, but then so is the screen as well. So just keep that in mind. Now using the tablet for a full working day, starting at around 9 a.m. in the morning and using it on and off until about 5 p.m. in the evening, I found that it generally had about 45, 50% to spare when it was time to clock off when I'm finished with work. It should be noted that this is a harder shift than most tablets are required to work. So you probably will get better battery life for most people than what I would get. I run my tablets pretty hard. It was pretty intensive. So just keep that in mind. So just to give you an idea of the battery life, I think it's actually really good on this. So that's something to actually like about it. Now, as far as that 68 watt fast charge adapter that is included in the box takes about an hour and 40 minutes to give you a full charge, which isn't too bad. Again, fast charging with that 68 watt fast charger is definitely something I like. It's a big plus here. The Lenovo Tab Extreme sports eight speakers in total. They're JBL tuned and they're pretty phenomenal. Let's give it a listen. Oh, you look so good. 
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo Tab Extreme tablet here for 2023? And I think this is probably one of the best tablets I've used in a very long time. Now, this is coming from a person who's an iPad Pro user. I use the 12.9 inch version and the 11 inch version. And I have never been a huge fan of the Android tablets, although I do like the Samsung tablets from the years past, of course. And this is the first time where I feel like this really gets a lot of it right, giving you premium features, a stunning 14.5 inch display. I love the keyboard here. I thought it worked really well. It's very premium feeling, good key travel. The touchpad was okay as well. I like the pen. I like a lot of the accessories that they give you here for a nice package that doesn't break the bank when you compare it to buying the same accessories for an iPad or a Samsung tablet. So that has been a good value here overall. But of course, it can be a bit unwieldy with its size, not the best to travel with. So that's something you have to keep in mind. And the Android tablet experience is still not the best. It needs some work, but it has gotten better, but there is room to improve. But overall, this has been my favorite tablet in a very, very long time. And I highly recommend, if you can get it, the Lenovo Tab Extreme here for 2023. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, threads. Links for everything will be in the description below. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.